Okay, so I want to reintroduce you to the idea of linear regression, but this time uh, there is no more hand wavings. Uh, we want to find out, so, so we have our data points, you know, we have our input feature x1, input feature x2, and whatever those features are, that's x1 and that's the value for x2 for that particular example. You know, we're going to take those, we're going to do w x1, w1 x1 plus w2 x2 plus b, and then that's going to be our prediction for y. And that's going to be the function of a line, basically. Um, but but now we want to know how to get w1 and w2 and b. Okay. Uh, so so no more of that hand waviness. I'm gonna go back and try to explain to you how do we get that. Now, what we're gonna do is is essentially a glorified guessing and checking method. Um, one thing I want to do is I want to simplify this problem. This actually, in this problem, we have two inputs, and then the output is a third z value that I haven't put on on this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce this down um, and make this a simpler problem by having uh, just an x value and just a y value. And so the the prediction is going to be y equals w x plus b. And we don't need to do w1 because there is no other x's. There's only one x. Um, now, we have a couple of examples, like we said before. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the equation of a line that best goes through all of these, a line of best fit, per se. Now, how do we do that? Well, I, as I said, it's a glorified guessing and checking method. What we're going to do is we're trying to find the values of w and b. Uh, so maybe what we'll do is we'll just get rid of b for now. We'll focus on how do we get the value for w, and then we'll reintroduce the value for b. It, it's the same. It's the same way. What we're going to do is we're going to have some initial guess, right? So number one is we're going to have some initial guess. Number two is we're going to evaluate that guess. And see how how good or how bad the guess was. And number three, we're going to find out how to update the guess. And finally, number four, we're going to find out how to, or what we're going to do is we're going to, like, after updating, we're going to repeat. And so uh, let's say on this number line, this is a number line, and somewhere on here is the correct value for W. Correct as in like quotations, correct, almost close to correct, I guess. Uh, the value for W, right? And let's say this is zero. And th this example, it looks like maybe the correct answer would be one, but maybe that's one, that's two. And so what we could do is like, you know, uh, effectively what, 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 what I'm saying here is maybe we start guessing at zero so that we're not biased to higher slopes or negative slopes or whatever. It doesn't matter where we start actually. And then um, let's say we evaluate that guess. And uh, how do we evaluate that guess? Well, the line would basically be y equals zero times x. So our line in that case would be so if w equals 0, then our line is y equals wx, which is a 0 times x, which is a 0. So effectively, it, it would be like this line over here, y equals 0. Sorry, it's supposed to be like completely horizontal. Um, and then we see how good is this line at fitting our data? These are our data points, and how good is it at fitting that data? I would say it's pretty bad just by eyeballing it. Um, but you know, let's say we find out how to do that somehow numerically instead of just eyeballing it. Let's say we find out how to do it numerically. Then after that, what we're going to do is find out a way to update that guess. 
And let's say magically we know that we have to increase the value of, of W in order to get a better estimation. So what we might do is we might increase it slightly, right? There's only two options. What we would get from this step is, what we would get from step number three is, should we update it to increase it or update it to decrease the value, right? And so there's only two options, but basically it's saying that we update in the, the rightmost direction. What we might do is we might take a step in the rightmost direction. We don't know how much, let's say. So we might take a step here. And so instead of having a slope zero, it's like the slope like this, right? It's it's a small slope, but it's still too small. Um, and then let's say we have to still increase it even more. Step number three tells us we have to increase it even more. So now we increase it, let's say all the way to two. And now the slope of two gives us something like this. And now we realize from step number three Step number three somehow tells us that we have to decrease the value. And then eventually, you know, we decrease it to this, increase it to that, decrease it to this. And then eventually we arrive at the correct value, let's say in this case is one. And that would give us this line, right? That I've drawn previously. And so after repeating many, many times, we would get to the correct value. So that, that's essentially how this would work. We would start with an initial guess, find out how good or bad it is, find out which direction we need to update B, uh, W in, increase or decrease the value, and then we would uh, essentially update it and then repeat the process as many times as it takes to get something that we're satisfied with. Okay, so now I need to break these steps down. Uh, for initializing the guess, we can just initialize the guess to zero, w equals zero. That should work fine. How do we evaluate the guess? How do we evaluate how bad this is? So I'm gonna um, take an eraser and, so I'm gonna erase this. Let's see if I can get rid of that. Okay, great. So we have a lot of uh, data points here and we have, let's say we have a generic line and this is our generic line. Actually, let's say it's pretty good. Let's say it's pretty good. Something like, something like this, right? So what we can do is we want, so what we wanna do is we wanna find out how good or how bad this, this uh, guess is. Well, it looks to me that, you know, a quality of being good would be through to pass through a point, right? And if you're not past, like if you're not passing through a point, at least be close to that point, right? What's a way to do that? Uh, what's a way to measure that, I guess? What we could do is for this point, we could measure its distance to the line or at least vertical distance. What is the uh, difference between, so let's say this is Y, um, the actual Y, and then this is our predicted y value, uh, y prime, y hat, let's say. y hat is our predicted value based on the line. So what we can do in order to find out how badly does our model do for this particular example, we can do y minus y hat. And then sort of um, this would give us like a distance between these two, right? But But you have to be careful because um, this distance can also be negative. So in order to make it a distance, we would need to make an absolute value out of that. So that's an absolute value around y minus y hat. So that would be the actual distance between the points. Um, absolute value is okay, but another thing to make it positive, another way to make it positive is to square it. So if we do y minus y hat uh, squared, that's another way of making it positive. Um, and, and this is actually the way that is mo more often used in machine learning. So this is called the, the, uh, the mean squared error. Actually, this is called a square error right now. We haven't done any mean. So square error. Square error for this particular example. And uh, let's say we do this for all of the examples, right? So we do this for all of the examples, we find the distance and then we square that distance and we get the squared errors, right? 
and we sum all of those together. I'm just going to put a sigma notation. This just means that I sum over all of the possible errors or all, all of the errors from all of the data points, right? How many errors are there going to be? Well, as many data points as I have. If I have 10 points, then 10 errors, right? So let's say I have 10 points. So then we would add up all of those from, let's say, i equals 1 to 10. And let's say this is yi and y hat i, right, which represents the real value for this example, and then the, our predicted value for the example. And then we subtract them, we square it in order to get the squared error. We sum those across all of the examples. And then um, let's say we take a mean. So we don't want to this to depend on the number of examples. So we can normalize this by taking the mean, dividing the result by 10 or multiplying by 1 10. Um, for, for some calculus pur pur purposes, some fancy calculus purposes, what we do is we actually divide by two times the number of examples, which would be 20 in this case. Um, but you don't have to worry about that for now. So in general, the formula, I guess, for this is 1 over 2 times, let's say, m, where m is the number of points. If we have m points, two, uh, 1 over 2m times the sum from i equals 1 to m. So across all the m data points, if you take the real value of uh, y and you subtract the predicted value of i, then you square that. That is a measure for how bad your model is doing right now. And you want to be as less bad as possible, right? So essentially what, you, what I'm saying is that whatever this is, we would want to minimize this. So this actually has a name. Uh, I'll call this j, right? But this j is a function which is called the cost function. And the cost function is essentially how bad your model is doing on, on some data. OK, so, so now we have the cost function uh, to tell how, bad, how badly we're doing. And the next step is to figure out how to update that guess. So I'll see you in the next video.